So if you look at from a price perspective, you see a positive trend going on to the future, but there's still one issue with electric vehicles that still remains, and that is range anxiety. So we have to explain range anxiety. It's, uh, for example, let me take my car and want to drive from Amsterdam to Munich with a, with a gasoline car. I don't have a problem because I can stop en route and fuel in two minutes and I can continue my journey. But with the electric car with a limited range of 300 to 400 kilometers, I have the problem that I have to plan my travel, stop and charge for uh, 30 minutes to maybe even a few hours. And this creates a, a mental range anxiety issue. So my question for all of you is, how can technology policy and business help in overcoming this range anxiety problem uh, with electric cars? So I think this range anxiety has uh, two uh, important sides. One is the mindset and the other one is the technology. But let's have a look at the mindset. I like to compare it to the mobile phone. And uh, this mobile phone, which I have now, I have to charge it every day, even if I use it extensively twice a day. And I am used to that, I am doing that because I see great advantage of having a smartphone. And I think hundreds of millions of users are doing the same. So we make a s switch from the phone charging once in a week compared to the car filling up once in a week to the phone which I charge even twice a day because I see the great advantage of this uh, technology. And uh, uh, this is the mindset. So we have to really get used to that, uh, to the idea that charging often is some part of the our uh, of our mobility plan. The technological part is partly infrastructure, which is the charging infrastructure, the charging the charger itself, and it's a chicken and egg problem. So we have to really get more charging spots in order to get more cars. The charging network in the Netherlands is already rolling out. We have approximately every fifty ki every fifty kilometer a fast charging station. But there is also need of na charging spots at the convenient locations, for example, at the workplace or offices or at the supermarkets, uh, at the leisure places, uh, etc. Uh, the drop in the battery price also take care takes care that the car itself will have a battery with a higher capacity. And uh, if I have a car with 100 kilowatt hours battery capacity, I can drive 500 kilometers, which is comparable to the combustion engine filling up, uh, fill filled up car driving range. So there is not really a big difference. Uh, at the same time, the plans in the future is that we will have 500 kilowatt, it's a huge power, charging uh, stations in along the highways. We are not there yet from the technological point of view. We need to do some development in the battery technology for the super fast charging. We need to also develop uh, some more technology in the power electronics to allow it and also the grid problems. But this is showing the plan that you will have to fill, it up, fill the up the car every three and a half, four hours driving, which is also a good and healthy stop for a coffee and to rest a little bit. And I think we should get used to that. Yes, range anxiety. Um, in fact, it's a transition uh, problem, I think, uh, and a serious problem. You will have to take it seriously. Uh, but if you look at the general figures, um, we are for centuries used to traveling about one hour per day. And that average is already possible with an electric car. But that's not enough, of course. There are cases that you have to travel long distances and drive more than you like to drive normally um, and especially with battery electric vehicles this is a point uh, because even if you have a large range vehicle you have to stop for quite a while to to uh, supercharge it or uh, do it otherwise uh, there are al already good solutions for that uh, the um, range extended vehicles uh, which there are in several forms for passenger cars, but also for buses and trucks, um, they uh, create another anxiety, and that's fuel anxiety. Uh, those drivers get used to the, the luxury of electric driving, and they hate to go to the pump, because that's costing money and costing time, travel time. So if you can do it smarter uh, with a full electric vehicle, they would love to do that. And maybe in the extreme cases, the, uh, the fuel cell electric vehicle is also a solution to get no anxiety in the end. I think the nicest example at this moment in time is what's happening at this moment in the trucking industry. The trucking industry was always said it's impossible to make an electric vehicle 
which fits the application of a truck. And that's proven not true. And the city distribution, you see very nice examples that an electric truck is more effective than a diesel truck that can do a lot of other things, I, uh, but driving in a city is not the best uh, value, not the best uh, uh, thing a, a diesel truck can. And sh shifting the cargo space, what's happening now in Rotterdam, uh, at the border of the city and let it take over without rearranging the, the cargo itself, but only taking that volu volume to another vehicle, which is very fast and uh, also a very uh, low, low cost, uh, works better, faster and cheaper than what we did in the city distribution uh, before. There are already positive business cases there. And even for the long haul, which is not in fact long haul, but a long distance uh, that you have to drive uh, to deliver your cargo, um, it's so that if you have one driver, it has to s the driver has to stop uh, by the regulation of driving time and resting periods in Europe. And that's after three hours uh, and, and a half an hour, they have to stop for 45 minutes. And we know that scheme from super supercharging of the uh, Tesla Model S and X already. So that's a very logic scheme to drive on. That has, a, has an enormous advantage that you really can rest. With an electric vehicle, you can charge, let it alone, uh, charging there, sitting to charge. And you go for a rest or for a dinner, a coffee. and you have your uh, uh, done, uh, your obligations for resting time. So I see things uh, very much uh, changing at this moment in time. It's getting used to uh, driving electric vehicles, but in the end it has uh, advantages. Another point we learned from the uh, Tesla Semi is that uh, one big handicap of trucks is that they cannot take hills very good, the traditional truck. It sometimes drops to 30 kilometers an hour. The electric truck is so powerful that it keeps that 80 kilometers an hour. That's time. And in the business, it's all about this time. Uh, so the resting time is, no is, 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 is a good use. Uh, the speed is constant. The comfort is better. And, you s and it's a better solution for city distribution. So I think range anxiety is important, but the longer the drivers or the users are uh, using that vehicle, they discover that it's an uh, emotional thing from the beginning. And if we have a good infrastructure, uh, then it will be uh, disappear in the end. I'd like to add one very exciting technological concept, which is the on-road charging, yeah. uh, using contactless charging for charging while driving. Yeah. This concept will can greatly contribute to the range anxiety. Of course, it's a future mobility concept. We will discuss it in the technology part of the MOOC in the future mobility. But this kind of concept can really uh, also contribute greatly uh, to the range anxiety, especially in the densely populated area. It can be, this concept can be economically even uh, responsible and uh, giving uh, good uh, economical results. So we shouldn't forget these kind of new concepts as well. Yeah, wireless charging will be the future anyhow in the end. We are not going to mess with cables for <laughs> no, many generations. No. Yeah. You, um, my colleague uh, Frank Rieck said something that I uh, also wholeheartedly agree with and that is we have to just adopt new habits. You know, it's about adopting new routines and that, uh, that change, you know, in our behavior is probably a much tougher challenge than making the new technology Excellent. and the new infrastructure timely available. And in, in, in uh, many countries, we, we do already see that governments, you know, California is one example, are co-funding the rollout of charging infrastructure. But then if they do this, you know, they usually don't do it only for battery electric vehicles. You know, governance usually refrain eh, from making a choice between uh, different technologies Solutions because they have to allow uh, th they have to ensure a fair 
playing field yeah. uh, fair co uh, and to ensure fair Level. competition in yeah. the in the market um so they um usually also support uh, the role out of hydrogen refueling infrastructure for fuel cell electric cars and uh, I think uh, you both uh, already pointed out that um, uh, the implementation of charging points in the built environment is an important uh, topic. And indeed, the new European guidelines for uh, clean and electric mobility do include guidelines for charging points in um, uh, public and private parking lots, uh, in, in, in residential yeah. as well as in uh, office and, and business areas. Um, but besides, you know, actual co-funding, it's even more important that government sets the rules of the game uh, for the industries that are competing uh, for this new market and in this new market. And the rules of the game, you know, also include the technical and operational standards to be followed. And one of the issues here is, you know, it's not only technical standards, but it's also the charging protocol for electric vehicles. Now, for example, the Netherlands has adopted what we call an open charging protocol. Uh, you can compare it, I think, with the roaming agreements that yeah. uh, exist yeah. between uh, telecom providers. But what good is the open charging protocol if our European neighbours uh, and the rest of yeah. Europe That's do not adopt it? Yeah. Uh, so there are still a lot of things to be settled here. Yeah, yeah. So if I wrap up this discussion on range anxiety, uh, it seems like there is technological solutions coming up, better batteries, better charging infrastructure, new technologies like on-road charging and also with battery swap technology. So that could help overcome this range anxiety. An important point is about standardization because while if in one country you make the range anxiety disappear, if it's not there in a neighboring country in a situation like Europe, you cannot still drive from Amsterdam mm -hmm. to Munich. And also range anxiety can be overcome if a better charging infrastructure is built both by government and companies on a, a nationwide or on a continental scale for electric mobility.